Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'll guide you through the process of setting up and deploying a Jekyll site using the Chirpy theme on AWS Cloud9. Jekyll, a static site generator, takes plain text and creates static web pages for websites and blogs. This is different from blogging platforms like Medium or Dev, which build web pages dynamically. Those platforms use a database to pull content every time someone visits a page, which can slow things down. With Jekyll, all pages are built in advance and just delivered when needed, making the process much faster because it skips the step of asking a database for content. Now Chirpy is a theme for Jekyll, which provides a specific design and layout for Jekyll websites, along with additional features to automate the creation and updates of the site using GitHub Actions for CI-CD. Chirpy comes with a tagging and category system, which simplifies content organization and navigation. Chirpy also automatically generates a timeline, forming an efficient library of your projects and documentation. All you need to do is write content in Markdown Commit them to a Git repository and Chirpy with GitHub Actions take care of the rest, transforming your content into a beautifully structured site with all these features automatically. The site's content and structure are maintained on a public GitHub repository, taking advantage of GitHub pages for hosting. This service automatically renders and serves the website directly from the repository, providing a free hosting solution. GitHub Pages also allows the integration of a custom domain, giving you the flexibility to personalize your site's URL. Today, we will be setting this all up using AWS Cloud9, a Cloud IDE. This allows for remote management of the Jekyll Chirpy site and offers a standardized setup so everyone following along can start with the same base Linux instance for this tutorial. For version control, the Git panel extension in AWS Cloud9 will be used for convenient access to Git commands within the IDE. My name is Denis Yomaz, and I'm an AWS community builder and content creator. Feel free to connect with me to ask any questions using the details shown on the screen. Today, you will launch and prepare the AWS Cloud9 environment, set up the development environment for Jekyll with Chirpy on Cloud9, configure Git and SSH for GitHub integration, set up the Chirpy theme with the Chirpy starter template, create and run a start script to preview your site in Cloud9, Deploy the site to GitHub pages using GitHub Actions. Personalize the Jekyll site configuration. Personalize the About Me page. Write the first post with Chirpy using Markdown syntax. And map a custom domain to GitHub pages. Please note, setting up this environment will involve executing a series of commands, which can be found on my documentation site, docs.digitalden. Cloud, linked in the video description below. Now, let's get started. To begin, we'll launch and set up the AWS Cloud9 environment. Start by heading to the Cloud9 console and create a new environment named Jekyll Chirpy Environment, or choose a name you like. For this tutorial, the T2 micro instance will be sufficient. After your environment is set up, open the Cloud9 IDE terminal and update your package manager to access the latest packages.
Next up, it was set up a development environment for Jekyll with Chirpy on Cloud9. We'll install Ruby, the necessary development tools, and configure the Ruby Gems environment. This will prepare your Cloud9 environment for Jekyll and Chirpy. After that, we'll install Jekyll and Bundler. Before we proceed, it's helpful to understand that Ruby Gems is the package manager for Ruby. This means it's a tool we use to handle the installation and management of Ruby software packages known as gems. Jekyll and Chirpy are examples of these gems. By setting up Ruby gems correctly, we ensure that Jekyll and Chirpy can be installed smoothly and maintained easily. This step is important for the stable operation of your website. Start by installing Ruby and the development tools. You will find all the commands you need on my documentation site. Just copy them and run them in your Cloud9 terminal. Next, we'll configure a dedicated directory for Ruby gems to make managing and installing Jekyll and Chirpy are Ruby gems easier and more secure. This setup avoids conflicts and ensures a smooth development process. Go ahead and execute the corresponding commands in your Cloud9 terminal. After setting this up, we'll install Jekyll and Bundler. Should there be a new release of RubyGems available, update to the latest version. You can then ensure Jekyll is correctly installed by checking its version. The Jekyll Chirpy environment on AWS Cloud9 is now fully set up and ready for development. Next, we'll set up Git, linking your AWS Cloud9 environment with GitHub. This is needed because when you commit content to a Git repository, Chirpy and GitHub Actions work together to automatically turn your content into a structured website. Let's configure Git with your information. These commands Identify you as the author of your commits. Replace your name and your email in the commands with your details. Moving forward, we'll generate an SSH key pair which allows you to connect to GitHub securely without typing your password each time. Execute the commands to create a new SSH key. Replace your email with the email associated with your GitHub account. Press Enter to accept the default file locations, and then next you'll encounter a prompt for a passphrase. Entering one is optional, 
If you choose not to, simply press enter twice. This will create a key pair without a passphrase, enabling you to use SSH without entering a password each time. Now start the SSH agent, which manages your SSH keys, and then add your new keys to the SSH agent. This lets the agent take over the authentication process. After that, you'll need to display and copy your public SSH key, which will add to your GitHub account to establish a secure connection. Once you have your public key, add it to your GitHub account under the SSH and GPG key section. Lastly, you can test your SSH connection to GitHub to ensure everything is set up correctly. With this, your Cloud9 environment will be ready for secure interactions with GitHub. We're now going to set up the Chirpy theme through the Chirpy Starter template. This approach is straightforward, ensuring you can focus on content creation. Navigate to the Chirpy Starter repository on GitHub and click on the Use This Template button. In the drop down, select Create a New Repository. You'll be prompted to name your new repository. Here, you can use your GitHub username followed by dot GitHub. .io. For example, as my GitHub username is Digital Den Free, I will name my repository Digital Den Free. .io. This naming convention signals GitHub pages to host and serve your site. Once deployed, your site will be accessible at this repo name. Next, in Cloud9, we will clone your new repository. Obtain the SSH link from your GitHub repository. And then in the Cloud9 environment, open the source control panel and select clone repository. Paste in the SSH link and hit return. With your repo cloned, it's time to install Jekyll and other necessary dependencies. In the Cloud9 terminal, navigate to your newly cloned project directory using a cd command. And then execute bundle install. This command will install the Ruby gem specified in the gem file, which includes Jekyll and the required plugins and themes. With the necessary Ruby gems installed, it's time to preview your site. Typically, you would use the command bundle exec Jekyll serve to accomplish this. The bundle exec is crucial as it tells the bundler to run Jekyll with the exact gems listed in your gem file, helping avoid any version conflicts. Running this command starts up a local web server. It builds your site and makes it available on your local machine, allowing you to see and interact with your Jekyll site exactly as it would appear online. This local server is a mirror of what will be deployed providing an essential preview that you can check for any issues before going live. However, because we're working on Cloud9, a cloud-based development environment, 
we must adjust this command to accommodate Cloud9 settings. Localhost and port 4000, which are default for local Jekyll servers, won't work here due to Cloud9's remote nature. Instead, we'll use this command. This tells Jekyll to serve your site on a host and port that are accessible through Cloud9. The host 0000 allows the server to be accessible from any IP address and port 8080 is the port that Cloud9 permits for web traffic. By using this command, you can preview your Jekyll site as if it were live right from the Cloud9 IDE. Entering this command every time you want to preview your site can be time consuming. Instead, you can create a start script in Cloud9 to automate the server launch process. Let's set it up. In the file explorer, create a new file within your project directory called start underscore jekyll.sh. Open the file in the Cloud9 editor. Now copy and paste the bundle exec jekyll serve command into your start script and save the file. To run the script, press the run button in Cloud9. This action will initiate the Jekyll server on Cloud9's designated port, allowing your site to be accessed. To view your site, go to the Cloud9's environment URL. And that's it. You'll be able to preview your Jekyll site right from the Cloud9 environment. Now that our Jekyll site is running in Cloud9, let's take a look at the workflow that will deploy our site to GitHub pages using GitHub Actions. To make the .github directory visible and access the GitHub Action workflow configurations, make sure your AWS Cloud9 environment is set up to show hidden files. You can check this by clicking on the gear icon and then select Show Hidden Files. Next, go to the .github directory in your project and find the workflows folder. Inside, there's a file named pages-deploy.yaml. Open it to see the specifics of the workflow. Now, let's talk about what's inside. The workflow is named build and deploy, and it's set to trigger on pushes to the main and master branches, except for changes made to the .git ignore readme or license files. You can also trigger it manually if needed. The permissions are set to read the repository contents and write to GitHub pages and ID tokens, aligning with security best practices. To keep your site up to date, the workflow will cancel any ongoing deployments if a new push comes in, preventing any deployment conflicts. The job within this workflow does the following. It uses the latest Ubuntu runner to carry out several tasks, checking out your code, setting up GitHub pages, configuring Ruby, and building your site with Jekyll. After the build, it tests the site with HTML proofer to catch any errors, and then uploads the built site to GitHub for deployment. Finally, it deploys the site to GitHub pages, making your site publicly accessible and providing you with a URL to the live site. This automated process ensures that every change you push is smoothly built and deployed, keeping your live site always updated with minimal manual intervention. To ensure your site deploys via GitHub Actions to GitHub Pages, a few configuration steps are necessary within your GitHub repository settings. Head over to your GitHub repository and click on the Settings tab. On the left sidebar in the Settings, look for the Pages section and click it. In the build and deployment area, you'll see a source setting. Select GitHub Actions from the drop down menu. This enables a GitHub Actions workflow for your project. This setup ensures that every push to your repository triggers the GitHub Actions workflow, automatically building your Jekyll site 
and deploying it to GitHub pages. It's a streamlined process that simplifies site updates, allowing you to focus more on content creation and less on manual deployment tasks. Next, we need to set your site's URL in the config YAML file for GitHub pages. Now, the config YAML file serves as a configuration center for a Drekel site, housing global settings like the site's title, URL, appearance options, and other optional parameters. It enables centralized customization, impacting everything from layout choices to how content is processed and displayed. Open the config YAML file and find the URL field, which sets the base URL for your site. Replace the placeholder with your actual site URL. For example, my GitHub username is digitalden3, so my URL would be like this. This sets up your site with GitHub pages. With the site's URL configured, you can now personalize other settings. Start by defining your site's title, tagline, and description, which is great for search engine optimization. Next, you can set the correct time zone to ensure all your posts carry the right timestamp. You can find your exact time zone string using any online time zone picker. You can enter your social media usernames like your GitHub and Twitter handles. In the social section, include your full name and email address, which can be used for site elements like the footer. You can choose your theme mode, light, dark, or automatic to match your style of the time of day. And you can also add a profile picture. Simply upload your image to the assets image directory and reference it in the avatar field. Make sure you use efficient image formats such as WebP for quick loading times. Now save the changes to your file. As we've personalized our site, the next step is to deploy it using GitHub Actions, which automates the build and publishing process with every push. In Cloud9's interface, find the source control panel. Here, we'll stage our changes. This prepares all your modified files for the next commit. Now, commit your changes. There's a text box in the source control panel for entering a commit message. Type in something descriptive like deploy Jekyll site and then choose commit all from the git panel menu. Now select push and your changes will be uploaded to your repository triggering the GitHub Actions workflow for deployment. Let's now head over to your GitHub repository and then click on the Actions tab. Here, you'll find a list of workflow runs, each one corresponding to a push made to the repository. Select the most recent run to see the workflow in action, including the setup, build, and deployment steps. Once the workflow completes, 
your site goes live and GitHub provides a URL for your hosted site, which is your GitHub username .github.io. Your updated Jekyll site is now published and accessible to everyone. Following the site deployment, you'll want to personalize the About Me page. To get started, in your tabs directory, open about.md. This markdown file is your canvas for self-introduction and sharing your narrative. When you're writing in Markdown with Chirpy or any other Markdown editor, wrapping text with a single backtick on each side will display the text as inline code like this. This is particularly useful for highlighting code snippets, commands, or any text that should be presented in a monospaced font, which is typical for code. In Markdown, the syntax to create a hyperlink involves using square brackets followed by parentheses. The text you want to display as the clickable link goes inside the square brackets, while the URL you want the text to link to goes inside the parentheses. This allows you to embed links within your text like this. Chirpy, being a Jekyll theme designed for guitar pages, follows standard markdown conventions. For a more visual touch, you can also add images. To insert an image into your About Me page, place this markdown code in the file, substituting profileimage.jpg with the name of your image. Then head over to the Assets Image directory within Cloud9 and upload the image you want to feature on your page. Save your changes and then preview these updates on Cloud9 server to ensure they look as expected. When you're happy with your About Me page, you can then share it by staging all your changes in the Git panel. Committing them with a message like Update About Me page and then pushing your changes. Again, this triggers the GitHub Actions workflow to deploy your updates to your live site on GitHub Pages. Next, let's take a look at how to write a new post using the Chirpy theme in Jekyll. Chirpy adds a layer of features on top of Jekyll's framework. To start, you'll be using Markdown for your post. It's a straightforward markup language that allows for easy formatting and conversion to HTML. For organization, keep your posts within the post directory. This structure is beneficial for sorting while having no impact on how Jekyll processes your posts. When you're ready to write, place your post file in the appropriate year folder and follow the naming convention. This naming convention starts with a four-digit year, 
followed by a two-digit month and then a two-digit day, all separated by hyphens. After the date, there's another hyphen followed by the title of the post. The title is then followed by a period and then the file extension .md, which signifies that the file is a markdown document. At the beginning of your post, you'll include the font matter. This is a snippet of YAML that specifies metadata for your post. Each of these fields has a specific purpose. Title will set your post's title. Date marks when the post was published, time zone included. Categories organizes your post into a primary category and a subcategory. Tags associates relevant tags with your post for better discoverability. Image links to an optional preview image. And then Alt provides alternative text for the image for accessibility and SEO. After setting up your font matter, you then write your content in Markdown. This allows you to format text, insert images, and more, all with simple syntax. For detailed guidance, including Markdown syntax and advanced Chirpy features, consult the Chirpy documentation on writing a new post and text and typography linked in my documentation site. This post is a practical example of how to use Markdown syntax and Chirpy special features. For example, when you use a hyphen followed by a space at the beginning of a line, it creates a bullet point in a list. Chirpy also introduces a variety of prompt types, tip, info, warning, and danger. These are easily implemented by adding the corresponding prompt type class to a block quote element The markdown syntax for creating code blocks involves using triple backticks at the beginning and the end of the block of code. Optionally, you can specify the programming language immediately after the opening backticks to enable syntax highlighting for that language in the platform that supports this feature. The table of contents is typically positioned in the right panel of a post. Should you wish to disable this feature across the board, you can navigate to the config YAML file and set the talk variable to false. If you want to add an image at the top of the post, you can provide an image with a resolution of 1200 x 630. These features represent just a small selection of what's possible. For more information, please see the full documentation. Once your post is written, you can preview it on the Cloud9 server to ensure it looks as intended. Then, stage the new post through the Git panel. Commit your changes and push to GitHub, which will trigger the GitHub Actions workflow.
your new content will automatically be transformed into a styled and structured format on your GitHub Pages site. In our final task, we are going to set up a custom domain with GitHub Pages. This is an optional enhancement that lets you personalize your site's URL even further. If you have a domain registered with Amazon Route 53, you can easily follow along. If you don't have a domain, don't worry, your site will still be fully functional and accessible via the standard GitHub Pages URL. We're going to use a subdomain such as docs.digitalden.cloud over a primary domain like digitalden.cloud to establish the space specifically for documentation purpose. Begin by navigating to the root directory of your repository. There, create a new file named CNAME in capitals like this. Open this file and then enter your subdomain, for example, docs. Dot digital den dot cloud and then save your changes. This action initiates the connection between your custom domain and your GitHub Pages site. Next, stage, commit, and push the CNAME file to GitHub. and then proceed to your GitHub repository settings and choose the Pages section. Here, input your subdomain in the custom domain field and confirm by clicking Save. Initially, a DNS record error will appear. This is a common occurrence and will be resolved once the DNS is configured correctly. Now set up a CNAME record within your domain's hosted zone on AWS Route 53. Launch Route 53 from the AWS Management Console and in your hosted zone, create a new CNAME record. Assign docs as the record name Select CNAME as the type, and for the value, enter your username.github.io. To confirm that DNS configuration is correct, you can use the dig command line utility for querying DNS name servers. If this line appears in your dig output, with your subdomain pointing to your GitHub username, followed by .github.io, it means your DNS is configured to connect your custom domain with your GitHub Pages site. When you provide GitHub Pages with your custom domain, GitHub itself will carry out a DNS check. After the check confirms that your DNS settings are correct, GitHub will automatically enable 
enforce HTTPS on your site. This means that your site will only be accessible over a secure connection, which is important for the safety and privacy of your visitors. It's worth noting that both the DNS verification by GitHub and the enforce HTTPS feature can take some time to activate. You might even see initial verification checks fail while the DNS changes propagate through the internet. This delay is perfectly normal due to the distributed nature of DNS servers around the world. If everything is set up correctly, it typically resolves on its own once the changes are fully propagated. This process can take anywhere from a few minutes to several hours. During this period, you can check back to see if the checks have passed and if Enforce HTTPS has been activated. After setting up your custom subdomain for your GitHub Pages site, you'll need to update the config YAML file in your Chirpy site to reflect the new domain. Here's how you can do it. In your local repository, navigate to the root directory and open the config YAML file. Locate the URL parameter in the file, which specifies the base URL for your site. Update this parameter to match your new custom subdomain. The reason you need to update this parameter in the config YAML file is that this setting is used throughout your Chirpy site. It ensures that all the internal links, assets, and resources are correctly referenced using a new domain. After making the update, stage, commit, and push the changes to your GitHub repository. This will trigger a new build of your site with the updated domain settings, and your site should now be accessible at your new custom subdomain, benefiting from GitHub's dependable hosting along with an SSL certificate for enhanced security. Though this final step is optional, it greatly boosts your site's credibility and reach.